think I'm going to have to have someone come up and put the for me because I thought I had it. So we, when we went through first chapter, the first part of this teaching, that's what we came um, and came to the conclusion that it was talking, speaking of not the soul of the person, but talking about the work of the body as relevant to this world here, natural world. And then when a person dies, they immediately go to judgment, whether it's a peace, the place of peace, resting with the fathers. Or if it's Hades, then the, we realize that the righteous are gathered to their fathers in peace and rest, speaking of the soul. That soul goes and returns to the place or goes to that place where um, it is destined uh, to be because of the walk of the flesh of the body within the world. And then the unrighteous are go, go to the grave or what is called Sheol, which means Hades. And it's a place of torment and flames. We looked at Luke, the 16th chapter, and we saw the rich man die thee, and we saw the poor man who was, um, he sick dogs on, who was Eleazar, that used to sit at his gate. Eleazar was classified as the righteous. Divi, the rich man, was classified as the unrighteous. When they both died, Divi lifted up his eyes. He was in the midst of the flames and torment. And the scripture calls it Hades. And he looked up and he saw, after, between, after the great gulf, he saw Eleazar, or as spoken of in the King James Version, Lazarus, in the bosom of Abraham, which we already established that the bosom of Abraham refers to the place of peace and rest. It's an exalted place for anyone who would be of uh, the Hebrew belief, the uh, covenant belief of Yahweh. Then, last um, time in chapter 2 of death versus the grave, we looked at the body, the difference between the body, soul, and spirit which the body, which was the word basar, and we found out that it was masculine. And then the soul, which is uh, nefesh, we found out it is a feminine term. So we saw how Father Yahweh went into man, Adam, and drew out that feminine pork and made haba. Then we see the spirit, which is the Ruach. Now, what we have to, what we're going to go in today is we're going to try to finalize it and deal with a couple of questions that had come up in part two. So we have the soul, the body, the soul, the spirit, Basar, Ruach and the fish. So we see the body being the outward, inward being the soul, and then the spirit being in the soul. So we know that Father Yahweh said that all souls are his, but he said then the soul that sinneth shall surely die. So we know that there's not just um, Yahweh who's giving out, who gives out his Ruach, HaKodesh. And see, that's the difference. The Ruach is a spirit. The HaKodesh makes it the set apart. So we have the spirit of the set apart one. Okay? 
Now, as we know, and as many of you all know, because we deal with people every day, we know that some of those people do not the, have the set-apart spirit in them. They have the spirit of the other one, of the enemy in them. So that's the portion that sets up within the soul. And that is what causes whatever your covenant you have accepted. And this is why it's so important for us as people of Yahweh to understand covenant. Uh, many times, you know, we often say, Rabbi and I have to do um, counseling, family counseling for people. We often say, you know, the, the, um, you have to understand covenant as we go into these uh, uh, relationship uh, uh, situations like marriage, especially because it is a covenant. It's a promise. It's it's your word. It's just as the 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 scripture says. It's better not to make a vow. That's why they call. The things that we speak to each other when we stand before the minister, they call them vows because you promise to do this forever. In sickness and in health, till death do we part. But then when someone breaks that covenant, then that's why it's so devastating because it goes much deeper than we think according to just the body. That's why you will have people who say, oh, just get over it. Oh, just get over it. But it goes deeper because it goes down to the, the covenant goes down into the soul and down to the spirit realm that dwells within that soul. And once it is broken, it is like a person, a part of that person has been taken and defiled. Not just flesh, but inward. Has anyone ever felt they've been defiled inwardly? That's, that's deep. Because some people think that when you do something to someone, it's, it's, it's okay. Well, they'll get over that. But when it's done in such a deep level, like, like a rape or molestation, that goes much deeper than just the body. But it, now it's a soul issue. Because now this pain is not just on the outside of me. You just didn't do it to the flesh. But you offended and you took. You, you messed with my nefesh, with my soul. It went down into the depths of my soul. So, as we look at um, a covenant with Yahweh, and then, then uh, I can, you can tell a person's covenant by their walk. So, as Sabbath keepers, people say, well, what will people say? First thing people say, when I say, I keep the Sabbath and I keep the feast days of the scripture, they say, oh, you're Jewish? Yep. That's the first thing they say. And that's a good thing because they relate it to what, I mean, what a, 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 a great, exactly. That is great, a great legacy to have that someone can look at you and say, oh, you're Jewish. So we definitely look at that as a good thing. That's because that's the covenant that they see and that's what they can relate it to. Relating it to that as this is something that those people do. So now we're looking at death. And the thing that, that I was looking at concerning, concerning death was where the scripture talks about um, death, Hades, and the grave, and um, how Messiah said that he conquered those things. So we're going to look at 
from a standpoint of um, some scriptural truths, we're going to ask answer the two questions that was asked concerning um, death and concerning things that occur after one dies. Amen. Okay, so we have immortals versus mortal. And there are two scriptures that I pulled. And the first one was Jude 1 and 6. Can y'all see that clear enough? Okay, can everybody read that together? This is concerning immortals. And the messengers who did not keep their own sexuality, but left their own dwelling, he is kept in everlasting shackles under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Okay, so we have these messengers that have fallen and that have, the scripture says that they did not keep their own principality. They did not stay in the area as immortals as they were supposed to. But what did they do? They came and they came into mortal beings and they did things that they were not supposed to do because they were already immortal. So what happened to these people? It says, and he has kept in everlasting shackles under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So we're going to talk about the great day. Now what I think is so awesome and what I think is so funny is um, when people say, um, well, we keep the first day of the week Sunday because that's the Lord's day. And I say, well, the Lord's day hasn't happened yet. Because the day of the Lord is the great day. That's the day when he brings judgment on this world. And on the sovereigns and the kings and the, and the governments of this world. So, but that comes from people just not being, you know, educated in the area. And they're just taking, like I said before, large groups of people and them believing whatever was being told to them and really not going and studying them out. Then we have, let's now read concerning the mortals, Hebrews 9 and 27, and it reads, go ahead. And as the way men to die once, and after this the judgment. So it tells us right there that man is going to die once, it is appointed one time for man to die. That's what the King James Version says. And then what? Judgment. Man dies judgment. The scripture says that, so pretty much I'm paraphrasing, as a tree falleth, what? So shall it lie. It's not going to flip over. It's not, you're not going to come out, come outside one day and it's on the left side falling over and then the next day you come out and it's on the right, you know, on the right side falling over. No, you might want to check your own eyesight at that point if you know that that tree has fallen over and now it was falling over on the left side and now it's falling on the right side. So flipped over to the right side. So as a tree falls, so shall it lie. So we see in dealing with mortals that that appointed time, that appointed time for that person to leave. Every one of us have an appointed time. And that when we get to that place, that there is no turning back from it and that we have to cross. And that whatever way we cross into eternity, that's eternity for us, period. And that's how we should be ministering to people because we have, we live in a society of people who don't, that's almost not fearful of death or dying. 